I was hopeful for third parties because we could talk about things like the $35 trillion national debt. And what concisely are we going to do about that as a nation? That translates to half of every dollar we collect in income tax being spent on the interest on the debt, not paying down the debt, just the interest of it. Imagine if you personally lived a life like that, where you spent half of your paycheck paying your credit card interest payments, not even the principal. Imagine that. Imagine how catastrophic and damaging that would be. Could you ever climb out of that hole? And that's where we're at as a nation. And both parties are moving us towards a 50 to $75 trillion national debt within the next 10 years. In a recent interview, Charles Hoskinson, founder of the Cardano blockchain, expressed concern over the political landscape. He argues that current political distractions and diverting attention from critical projections relating to the U.S. debt. In June, the Congressional Budget Office, a non-partisan watchdog released an update to its budget and economic outlook for 2024 to 2034. The report highlights a concerning rise in the U.S. federal deficit which is projected to reach $1.9 trillion this fiscal year and to continue growing until the total debt reaches over $50 trillion by 2034. According to the CBO, debts over this period will total over $24 trillion which is about 50% larger than the historic average for the last 50 years when measured against economic output. The CBO report forecasts significant increase in the budget deficit over the next decade driven by rising interest costs and increased spending on programs, such as Medicare and Social Security. Make sure to watch to the end of this video, where Hoskinson provides insight into why the current democratic system is deeply flawed. Also, if you enjoy listening to crypto-related content, please show your support by liking and subscribing to this channel by following the link in my bio, and get access to my free daily crypto updates and expert predictions direct to your inbox. Each newsletter contains market intelligence, on-chain data and latest updates from experts in the crypto space. All of this is available completely free of charge. Signing up only takes a moment and you can always change your mind later on. Now back over to Charles Hoskinson. The point of this video is that, uh, according to news reports, it's very likely that the candidate I chose the back, RFK, is going to drop out of the race um, Friday and endorse Donald Trump. And there's a natural question that people ask when that happens. Do people fall in line and create a unity government? And even though you hold your nose, maybe you uh, endorse the guy at the top. And I get asked a lot about this. And I was actually in an, recently in an interview with Sin City Crypto. And they asked me, you know, and also uh, other people, for example, when I'm on uh, Gokstein's show, he's a Trump supporter, asked me about it as well. And says, come on, you got to endorse the orange man. And my broader point was that the system is badly damaged and it's a bipartisan duopoly that operates on the, con the concept of lesser of two evils. It is absolutely extraordinary how much we're willing to excuse in people because we don't want to let the other side win. The Democrats claim to be a party of democracy, that they believe everybody's voice and vote should count. Numerous third-party candidates, RFK included, have been directly by the DNC targeted to prevent them from appearing on the ballot. They took the time to collect the tens of thousands of signatures, hire the lawyers, file the paperwork, and any technicality, any issue, even if it doesn't even actually exist, they're going to sue you over it, prevent you from getting on the ballot because of the risk of taking votes away from them. That's not democracy. When one weaponizes the legal system to attack their political opponents, it's not democracy. We've endured four years of lawfare against the cryptocurrency industry. And people on Team Blue seem to excuse it and say, well, Trump did some stuff. No, choke point 2.0 was a unique phenomenon of Biden, as is the SEC going after nearly every American exchange and most of the layer one protocols in some way or another. We do not live in an age of clarity, and when we've asked for it, including legislation that was common sense, bipartisan, and sensible, it was either vetoed or killed in committee because of this current administration. And yet we're told that somehow they're going to be pro-crypto, but apparently the party that believes in democracy, which threatened to remove the sitting president using the 25th Amendment, the party that believes in democracy, which picked their candidate with no votes or democratic process, that was allowed, tells us that this candidate's policies, we're just going to have to wait until after she's been elected to know what they are. There's no accountability there. and There's no apology there. 
it's a crooked and broken thing. And saying, well, we really hate the orange guy, so that's an excuse to vote for that, hold your nose, or somehow this will preserve and protect the institutions and the integrity of the United States of America. What, what are we protecting exactly? The debates were really important to me because when we had third parties for the first time ever, we could talk about new things, not which bathroom you use or which particular ethnic group seems to think that they're going to get screwed this election cycle or poor versus rich and all of this nonsense and noise. By the way, there were people at the DNC bragging about being billionaires as well, including the governor of Illinois. We had Oprah tell us how evil and unfair America is and how systemically racist it is and all the challenges she felt when she's worth $2.7 billion. Only in America could a person like Oprah accumulate that wealth. Didn't happen in Europe, never has, never will. Didn't happen in Asia, never has, never will. Only here. I don't fundamentally believe this nation is unfair and evil and systemically problematic and everybody judges each other differently based upon the color of their skin. It's a regressive and damaging and horrible philosophy. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for news and expert predictions direct to your inbox.